What's going on everybody? I'm just chilling here in my hotel room, but I thought I would take a minute to show you guys how to actually create a lemon rig. Please do not mind the Arby's cup. Yes, people still eat at Arby's. Why did I even say, why did I bring that up? So you may have seen either me or Thresher Fishing use a lemon rig in the past. And as far as I know, it hasn't been put on YouTube on how to actually make it. So that's what we're going to do today and then talk about the theory behind it. So you might enjoy this. You might want to use it yourself. So let's assemble this sucker real quick get right into it. So before we assemble it, I'm going to give a short outline of how this thing looks when you're using it in the water. Generally, you want to use this from shore applications, but boat works as well. The main thing that we use it for is at the jetties. As you can see, there's rocks all along the bottom, which is your main reason for using a lemon rig, is to stay above those rocks and so you're not getting snagged all the time. So in my case, I'm standing on shore and I've got a stance that says that I'm ready to be catching a fish, if not catching one already, all right? You gotta be low center of gravity and just hang on tight. And you might even have a little teary-eyed laughing going on. It's no big deal. It's all gonna be okay. Now with a normal popping cork setup, you can't throw it very far to begin with. So you're gonna be fishing very close to the rocks and you only can throw it about three feet down below the water's surface. For the most part in fishing, or at least saltwater fishing, which is what I know about, the fish are swimming along the bottom. So you have to be able to sink your bait low enough so that they can actually detect it. So the popping cork might not always go low enough depending on how deep the water actually is. You're gonna be missing out on those fish that are swimming right along the rocks like so many of them do. One particular fish that you might be missing out on if you're not all the way down against the bottom is the gaff top sail cat catfish. With the lemon rig, you'll be able to put that hook right in front of the gaff top's face. You can easily get your bait about eight feet below the surface depending on how long your leads are. And we'll get into that in a minute. So the leader that's going down to your hook is going to be attached by a three-way swivel to the rest of the rig. I'm just going to call this the drop to your hook. You want this to be the lightest line that you use within the whole rig just in case your hook gets hooked up on a rock and snagged up, you're gonna be able to only break off the hook and not lose the rest of your rig. The next drop from your three-way swivel goes up to your lemon bottle, and we'll just call this the drop to your lemon bottle, or lemon line, whatever you wanna call it. And of course, the other eye on your three-way swivel goes to your main line, which connects to your rod and your reel. I highly recommend using braided line as your main line over traditional mono, and I'll just leave it at that but feel free to put a leader at the end of your braided main line down to your three-way swivel. That's personally what I do, and if you experiment with that, you'll probably like it. You can make the leader between your three-way swivel and your braided line however long you want. I normally do about five feet. Now let's assemble this bad boy. It's very simple. First off, we need to get a lemon bottle. I like to use the bigger size of the lemon bottle which is 4.5 ounces, because that way you can have more air inside the bottle or more juice, whichever you prefer, and we'll get more into that in the advanced tips. One good place to find lemon bottles is a liquor store, if you're 21, and I don't know why that auto filled so quickly. Another good place that you can find these lemon bottles is at the grocery store. I went to one near me called Fiesta. The real lemon brand is one of my favorites, but there's also a bottle with a long neck on it that will work fine as well. Now once you've acquired your lemon bottle, you want to squeeze about half the juice out in general and make sure not to squeeze it into your eye because that would hurt. You're going to need some mono or fluorocarbon for your drops to your lemon and your hook. And so I have 50 pound going to my lemon bottle and 30 pound going to the hook. And that's just a pretty average pound test rating that I'm normally using at the jetties and even in shore. You're going to need three-way swivels as well. Link in description. And you're gonna need hooks. These are some of my favorite to use for live shrimp. It's the owner Mutu Light Circle. To make the drop to your lemon bottle, rip off about six feet of line from your spool. I like the drop to end up at about five feet. Go near the end of your line and tie about three or four half hitch knots, AKA overhand knots. These knots will keep the line inside of your lemon bottle. To do this, first remove the tag, unless of course it's your style 
to leave the tag on. Remove the green cap and also remove the small pressure fit nozzle. The easiest way to remove this nozzle is using fishing pliers or pliers of any sort, needle nose. All I had with me was just a can opener and it worked fine. Thread your line through the bottom of the nozzle and as you can see, that's how it sticks inside the lemon bottle. Now you can screw the green cap back on. And keep in mind, you don't have to do this every time you go fishing. You can use this same line over and over and over. Attach the other end of this line to your three-way swivel. And you can either trim off the tag ends as you go or just all at the end. The next drop will go to your hook and it is very, very similar. I also like it to be about five foot, but you can go longer or shorter than your lemon drop and just experiment whatever is working on that particular day and around that particular structure. So now just connect the other eye of the three-way swivel to your main line, you're good to go. So if you have any different ways of making this rig, let me know in the comments below. Now that we're done with the shenanigans, let's get into why this is actually a very useful rig. So first and foremost, it elevates your bait off the bottom so you're avoiding those snags being hung up and having to retie. So this allows you to fish a longer amount of time without having to adjust your setup. Secondly, it's customizable so you can adjust the drops if you need a longer drop to the lemon bottle or down to your hook. You can always make those adjustments on the fly. Like I said before, you also get very good sensitivity. As you can see with the main line, it's more underwater than the popping cork rig. This gives you greater sensitivity, similar to how fly fishermen, when they strip line in, they keep the rod tip underwater and they can maintain much better control of the fly that's at the end of their line. The same goes with this lemon rig. If you use it, you'll see how the sensitivity works for yourself. Maybe you guys have experienced this too, but it feels a lot more sensitive than a normal popping cork setup. With a lemon rig, you can have your bait sitting below the surface about seven or eight feet quite comfortably. And if you're using an extra long rod, you can make your drops even longer on your lemon rig and have it sitting even deeper or shallower. It just depends on whatever structure you're fishing. With a normal popping cork setup, if your leader is longer than three or four feet, it's gonna be very difficult to cast it's just gonna become a mess. And easily, one of your most important things is your casting distance. You can cast it much further if you need to. We'll get into that in the advanced tips right now. So obviously, you can cast further the more lemon juice you leave in your bottle. So if you have a light bait, such as live shrimp, you wanna leave a lot of lemon juice left in your bottle. I would say about half to three quarters of the lemon juice. But where you run into problems is if you're using a strong, bigger bait such as a live mullet if it's 10 inches or so it'll actually be able to pull the bottle under the surface and you'll prematurely think you got some fish biting and you just don't want that to happen whenever you're trying to actually catch something use half the bottle or less i would say probably a quarter of the bottle because they already have the weight that you need to actually cast them very far so if extending your drops is not working for your bait to get far enough below the surface because there's strong current or maybe because the line that you're using is thicker, you might want to add split shots near the end of your hook line. I would say about a foot from the hook. The fish will not detect that. It won't throw them off from eating your bait and you can put, you can put one or two, three, as many as you need. And one of the things if you want a very successful lemon rig is use a bigger swivel. The ones I had in this tutorial were size two watt and that's pretty good for serving the same reason as split shots, but then you're not gonna have to worry about adding split shots once you're out fishing already, and you don't have to worry about the split shots sliding up and down the line. And also that's just one less ingredient that you need to make your lemon rig. So especially when you're making one on the spot, you will save a lot of time in the long run doing this. And you guys know I love throwing lures, but there's also something about just catching a fish on just a hook that makes it a lot easier. There's not the weight of the lure being thrashed around when you have a fish like trout or, and especially tarpon. They use the weight of lures to actually throw the hook from their mouth. But when you're using something weightless, like a lemon rig that's just a bare hook, it's, it could stick in there a lot better. 
So let me know if you guys have ever seen me use a lemon rig, explain it before, and have used it yourself. How did it work out for you? If you end up making this one, let me know how it goes. One of the biggest applications that we have for using the lemon rig is fishing for sheep's head. Because you can easily put live shrimp on there. You can get it close to the rocks without snagging up too much. And it just seems to work really well for them. Here's about a week ago, it was me and Young and we were just catching some sheep's head. And I, I figured, you know what, pick up the camera and show you guys how we're actually using these out in the field. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Drop a like if you like this video, found it informative at all. I need to do more of these informational videos, so let me know if you enjoyed in the comments as well. But anyways guys, I will see you next time, and check out this sheep's head, boy. So as I'm casting, I just saw some sheep's head sitting right there, and young has been throwing live shrimp, which is obviously great sheep's head bait, so we're gonna see if he can hook one of these guys up right here, right behind me. Right yonder. Nice! Dang, that didn't take long at all. <laughs> Proof of concept right there. That's a nice one too. Woo! Dang, that was so quick. <laughs> Dude, that was awesome. How many you got? This is my third, fourth. You want me? Yeah. Yeah, come on. Can you hold the sheep's head up real quick? Oh, sure. Yeah. Got to show what this lemon rig is capable of. <laughs> it can catch these monsters right here. 